on the campus of Portland State University, the largest university in the state of Oregon. This campus, as well as Oregon, has had a storied past when it comes to animation and comic history. In fact, Mike Richardson, the founder of Dark Horse Comics, went to school here. You might remember, if you grew up in the 60s or 70s, this voice. Listen to this. <laughs> of course, that's Woody Woodpecker. The voice of Woody Woodpecker is? Well, let's ask our next guest. Please welcome Bill Crawford, project manager for the Mel Blanc Project. And when I say Mel Blanc Project, I just gave away who that voice was. You did. Well, he uh, perfected the laugh of Woody Woodpecker um, when he was actually going to high school at Lincoln um, High School, which is uh, actually Lincoln Hall on is the campus on the now. campus here now. And uh, it was just sort of an annoying thing that he perfected. Um, <laughs> as a young man and uh, survives to this day. Everyone knows the sound of that. But he did the laugh. He did the laugh, yeah, um, due to uh, contractual uh, difficulties later on because he was working for uh, Warner Brothers. He uh, went on to, uh, you know, they kept the laugh, but he no longer did the voice of Woody Woodpecker. Now, when we talk about Mel Blanc, I, I say to myself, Porky Pig, of course, Bugs Bunny, but a lot of the Disney characters, I thought, was Mel Blanc, and you said he had only one role in a Disney project. He did. Uh, he was uh, did a couple weeks uh, voice acting for a, a part of a drunken cat in Pinocchio that was later cut from the uh, the story, and they just had him do one hiccup, and he jokes one hiccup, just one hiccup, and he was paid eight hundred dollars for his work, and. He said that's probably the most expensive hiccup in showbiz history. <laughs> I'll bet it was. Mel Blanc was influenced at an early age by some of the old vaudeville actors, right? That's right, yes. Uh, that's one of the things that we will be um, covering in uh, our uh, lecture series for the Mel Blanc Project. Um, starting on June 8th, um, you know, uh, we'll have a, a show uh, where we lay out, uh, historian Gary Locker will lay out um, the factors that were in place in the uh, amazing scene at the time. Uh, he would have seen uh, uh, Groucho Marx, Eddie Cantor, and Jack Benny. Now, Mel Blanc was on the cutting edge when radio was just getting started. He uh, did a show called The Hoot Owls. When he was 19, he was, um, I guess he was uh, recruited by the Hoot Owls, which uh, th this would be uh, 1927, and that's uh, really on the cutting edge of radio. It was a new medium at the time. It was like the almost like the internet of its day and the hoot owls was a sort of mock uh, fraternal organization that uh, was one of the first nationally syndicated radio programs right and he, that aired on kgw but he was also on kex you said that's right he came back um after you know trying um trying his hand at show business in southern california he came back and was offered his uh, own uh program and that was for KEX and he really was worked ragged. He uh, was the director, producer, writer and main performer of all the different voices on the show. Now I mentioned Porky Pig, Bugs Bunny, The Laugh of Woody Woodpecker. What else would we have uh, uh, remembered Mel Blanc? For? Pepe Le Pew, um, Foghorn, Leghorn, even uh, Wile E. Coyote. Um, he really was the, the workhorse. Bad bad word for it, but uh, he was, he did the bulk of the work for the, the wonderful Warner Brothers cartoon. Now I mentioned Mike Richardson from Dark Horse. Mm -hmm. Matt Groening with The Simpsons mm -hmm. was from Oregon. You Pinto Kolvik, tell me about him. Uh, he was the voice of Goofy. From Oregon. From Oregon. And the story I've heard is that he's kind of doing a parody of what, what he considered a, a yokel Oregonian <laughs> accent. Right? All right, again, the lecture series airs when and where? Uh, three of the lectures will be at uh, um, uh, ethos at IFCC mm -hmm. and that starts uh, June 8th we'll cover the vaudeville scene as I mentioned before um, the pop stars that were coming into being that became uh, national successes in uh, uh, Blank's early days and then the neighborhood where he grew up which is now the 405 freeway okay uh, and it'll end right here on PSU with the um, how uh, radio nurtured his career and uh, that will be at Lincoln Hall. All right, Bill Crawford, thank you very much for joining us. Thank, thank you, you for being here as well on Comcast Newsmakers. Make it a great day.